Good morning, New Home Family Worship Center, specifically New Orleans East and Houston, Texas. I wanted to uh, pre-record this message uh, for you guys today because the word that God has put on my heart is something that I, I feel is uh, time sensitive. Uh, of course, we have great campus pastors in uh, Pastor Russell in East and Pastor Watson in Houston, but I feel that uh, this message that God has given me for for the body today is something that needed to uh, be spoken today. I've had a long day, but I just felt compelled to take this time uh, to deliver this message. And I want to talk today about three essential people that you will need in your life. Three essential people that you will need in your life. And when I say three essential people, I'm not talking about individuals per se but three distinct types of persons that bring three distinct, distinct qualities into your world for you to maximize your life. I think all of you can agree with me today that um, <clears throat> the people that are in and out of our lives uh, have a great deal to do with the quality of life that we live. Uh, if, you, if you really stop and think about it right now, where would you be had you not allowed the wrong person or the wrong people into your life? What if you had been intentional about uh, who you let into your world? What I'm learning as I grow and as I get older and a little wiser, hopefully, I'm learning that relationships have to be intentional. Your destiny is, is extremely sensitive to the people that you wrap it in. You cannot surround yourself with toxins and think you won't be poisoned. And there's a text that is powerful. It's found in Isaiah 43 and four. You'll have to kind of do the old fashioned Bible search with me on this one today. We don't have any graphics for this one. In Isaiah 43 and four, it says, since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And watch this, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. The Spirit of God came upon me <clears throat> and said, son, I am bringing people into the lives of my people. I am introducing intentional divine connections into the lives of my people. For some of you who have never embrace the concept of networks. You've never embraced the concept of uh, being outward and, and, you know, extroverted to some extent. This is the season for you to open up and to embrace the new people that God is bringing into your world. Because what God is getting ready or what God is bringing into your life now, the people that God is bringing into your life now, are going to be people that are going to be given for your life. There's a season coming up on you <clears throat> where your relationships are no longer going to drain you and just withdraw from you. But the relationships that God has, has ordered for your life in this season are relationships that are going to nurture you, relationships that are going to build you up relationships that are going to be reciprocal. Many of you that are watching me right now, you've been tied up in relationships where you've done all of the giving, you've done all of the sacrificing, you've done all of the pouring out, you've done it all, and you've had no one in your world to really pour back or to reach back or to reciprocate. The Lord says that he is, he is, he is bringing a new generation of people into your life that are going to pour into you as much or more than you pour into them. You can, you, I, I made this statement some time ago. You cannot choose, listen to this very carefully, you cannot choose, you cannot choose your fans, nor can you choose your critics, but you must choose your team. You will always have people that are cheering and you will always have people that are jeering. But at the end of the day, you cannot be focused on your fans or your critics. You must intentionally choose your team. 
You can have an entire stadium rooting for you and cheering for you and still lose. You can have an entire stadium that is booing you and still win. It all boils down to the quality of your team. Who are your people? That's my question for you today. Who are your people? I want you to really pray about and think hard about who's on your team and what do they bring? Even in sports, it doesn't matter what, how big your name is. When you get to the point that you cannot contribute to the scheme of that team, they either make you second string or they trade you. Who's on your team? There are many of you who are holding on to people out of some God-forsaken loyalty that God never ordered. God never asked you to be loyal to people to the extent that they would destroy your entire life. When people do not agree with your destiny, even Jesus said, dust your feet and keep it moving. You cannot have your life preoccupied with the wrong people and then expect God to replace or God to send the right people into your world. There are some of you that God is trying desperately to usher the right people into your life, but you will not let go of the wrong people. See, hitchhikers are dangerous because when hitchhikers come into your world, you don't know them and you don't know what they bring into your life. And there are a lot of you who have not chosen your relationships intentionally and people have just simply hitchhiked a ride on your wagon of destiny. And as a consequence, they have derailed your purpose. They have driven you off course. They have delayed your arrival time. And in some instances, they have destroyed even the idea of your destiny. You don't even know where you are now. But I learned something from Jesus, and I want you to watch this. And, not, and I'm not going to be long today. It doesn't need to be long because this is a message that God has given to me. In Luke chapter 9, very interesting. And, and search this out when you get a chance at home today. In Luke chapter 9, verses 28 and 29 says, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took, he speaking of Jesus, Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. And this is where the Mount of Transfiguration, I've been there. In fact, I'm going back there again soon. And he brought Peter, James, and John. And when you search this out in scripture, you will find quite frequently that Jesus, though he had 12 disciples, quite frequently he pulled Peter, James, and John aside to go and to do special works of miracles, to go on special missions. He, he, he chose Peter, James, and John seemingly as his inner circle, he had his disciples, but then he had an inner circle. Everybody that's on uh, in proximity is not necessarily in your inner circle. You're going to have to discover who are my Peters, my Jameses, and my Johns. Now, another thing we learn from Jesus that I think we all can take a lesson from is that even in the choosing of his 12 disciples, Jesus chose them. He didn't allow them to just simply attach themselves to his ministry. He chose the people that he would allow into his life. And I'm here to say to you today that this is the season for you to be intentional about your relationships and to choose the people that you will allow into the various areas of your life. You'll have the crowd, You'll have your disciples, but then you'll have your inner circle. Jesus chose Peter, James, and John. Number one, three essential people that you need. You need a Peter. Peter represents the warrior. 
Peter represents somebody that will fight for you. And see, there, 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 there are a lot of you that are watching me right now who do not have people in your life that will fight for you. Everybody needs people that will fight for them. Especially when, watch this, especially when you have a good heart. When you have a good heart, it's easy to give everything away to people that are giving nothing back. You find yourself fighting for people who are not fighting for you. But the Lord said, I'm getting ready to put some Peters in the lives of my people. Now watch this. You don't know if a person will fight for you until you're in trouble. So there are a lot of you all that think you have Peters, but they're really nothing but mouth. See, when, 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 it, when it comes down to it and they come in to take you, do you really have somebody that's going to pull their sword and go to swinging for you? Because all of us need people in our lives that will fight for us. That not only will fight for us, but we need people that will fight with us. You know, even in, uh, even in the account of David uh, in 1 Samuel 30, verses 8 through 10, where David inquires of the Lord after their, he, his wives and his children and his men's wives and children were taken, David says, shall I pursue? The Lord says, pursue. And then you find down there in uh, verse 10, it says, but David pursued, 1 Samuel 30 and 10, but David pursued he and 400 men. Watch this. They were going to fight. He and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. Now, when I first read that, I said they must have been tired. But when you read the full context, you discover that when they got when they won the battle and they came back, the brothers that went to war and won didn't want to share the spoils with the brothers that stayed. So it wasn't that they were so tired that they just couldn't go. They were scared to fight. All of the spirit had left out of them. You, you, you do not know if you can rely on a person to fight for you until you're in a time of difficulty. So I say to you that some of you uh, are in the greatest season of your life to discover your true friends because it is when you are at the bottom that your friends surface. We all need people that will fight for us. Proverbs 17 and 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. In other words, when I get into my most difficult time, my brothers will appear, my sisters will manifest. Those that will fight for me will surface. They, they don't do a lot of talking. They don't tell you about how they, I'm with you, I got you, I got your back. No, 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 no. They're usually quiet. But when you need them, they come out like gangbusters. And some of you have never had that. I thank God that I have a lot of people that fight for me. I have a lot of people that fight for me. And that's why I don't get cynical with people that don't. I don't get cynical with people that walk away from me because God has given me an army of people that stand with me and fight for me. And God says, I'm getting ready to send some Peters into the lives of my people. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie down together, then they have warmth. But how can one be warm alone? And though a man might prevail against him who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. God says, I'm getting ready to send some warriors into your life. You've been fighting life by yourself. But God says, I'm getting ready to send some Peters into your life. People that don't mind drawing the sword. And you know, interesting about when Peter cut off that man's ear, when it came to get Jesus, Jesus told Peter, put the sword up. He didn't tell him to throw it away because there are seasons of warfare when you're going to have to have some warriors. Second thing, second kind of person that, that is essential for your life. You need some Jameses. James 
represents faith. You're going to need some faith partners. You're going to need some people that will strengthen your faith. You're going to need some people whose faith, their personal faith is so strong that when your faith is weak, you can get a jump from their faith. You don't need to have your life filled with faith killers and faith drainers. You need some people, you need some Jameses that have their own faith to add to your faith. Like that man that uh, was paralyzed and he had four friends found in Luke 5. He had four friends that carried him to Jesus and they couldn't get in by way of the door. They couldn't get in by way of the window. So they tore off the roof and let down the man to see Jesus. And the man got healed that day. But look what Jesus says in Luke 5 and 20. And when he saw their faith, those that carried him, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the man got up off of his bed because he had friends who had faith, who believed in God and believed in him. God says, I'm getting ready to send some people into your life that are going to Lend their strength to yours. Lend their faith to yours. And they're going to they're gonna hold on to God for you, but they're also going to believe in you. They're going to believe in your dream. They're going to believe in your vision. To the point that they're going to get behind it. They're going to invest in it. They're going to sow into it. God says, I'm sending some Jameses into your life. you got to have people that believe in you. you got to have people that believe in your vision. You can't roll with faith killers every day. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20, it says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. God says, I'm getting ready to send some faith partners into your life. I'm going to send some Peters that will fight with you. I'm going to send some Jameses that will have great faith for you and in you. And then watch this. You're going to need some Johns. John represents love. You're going to need some warriors. You're going to need some faith people or faith partners. And you're going to need some, some people that will love you. John represents love, that unconditional agape love, that God kind of love. All of us need that. I know I need it. I need it as a pastor because the demands are great and, uh, you know, I'm human. I don't always get it right, but I thank God that I have people that love me in spite of my failures. And God says, I'm sending some Johns into the lives of my people. Some of you have never known what it meant or what it means to be loved unconditionally. And God says, don't allow the bitterness of your past to close you to the brightness of your future. I'm getting ready to send some people into your life that are gonna love you unconditionally and heal all of the wounds of your brokenness. I know you may sit there with tears in your eyes right now because you don't know what it means to really be loved. God says, I'm getting ready to direct some people. I'm getting ready to give you people for your life. You got to have people in your life that love you for nothing but you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's my prayer for you, that God will send you some Peters to fight for you, some Jameses to have faith in you and for you, but that he will send you some Johns to love you unconditionally. Proverbs 10 and 12 says, hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. What is getting ready to come into your life is so much greater than what has been. This is a prophetic word for you today. Your life is shifting and changing. 
I love you.